Before I go any further, I just ask y'all to give the praise team a round of applause. Amen. Y'all give a from Brother James to the singers, because I don't want to mess anybody's name up or miss anybody's name. But it is so important in music ministry for those that have done it and those that have been doing it for years and, and for you young women that are coming up. It is so important in music ministry for you too to labor and study in God's word. Music controls the atmosphere. Music plays a big part in setting up everything that goes on in the service. Amen. You young ladies did phenomenal on today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And before I go any further, I would like to pray again. Uh, I don't ask that you stand, but I do ask that you join me. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, we come before you on this afternoon. First and foremost, to say thank you. Thank you. Father, thank you for allowing us to see a day that which we have never seen again. Father, we are grateful for the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, Father, your name is worthy. And we've come together on this afternoon simply just to lift you up and tell you thank you. Father, I pray over the service right now for I'm thankful that you've already met us here, God. But I ask right now that you go ahead and have a seat. That you get comfortable in here and that you do what you want to do, oh, Father. Father God, I ask that you cover the Langley family and the Marby family right now, God. I ask that you continue to keep them lifted, Father, for they lost a very influential and very key piece to the puzzle. And God, I ask right now that you go into each and every heart of those family members and that you just hug them tight, God, and that you hold them, and that you keep them lifted right now. For right now, it may seem dark, but we do know that joy comes in the morning. Father, I pray for the servant of this house, Bishop Langley and his wife, Lady Tanasia Langley, yes, Lord. that you keep them elevated, God, that you keep them sheltered, that you keep them covered, yes. that you continue to pour into him, that he can continue to pour out into his sheep. Yes. Father, we thank you on today and we love you. I ask right now that your word do what you have sent it to do, Father, yes, Lord. for it cannot come back into you, Lord. Father, I ask that it does that which you need it to do, set the captives free. For some come bound down, for some come for another reason, Father. But we ask right now, whatever they seek in you, that it is done in your name. For we love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good afternoon. For those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Minister Odell Register. Um, guest speaker today. Uh, not really a guest. Y'all are family. Uh, so beautiful to see all y'all faces. Everybody is looking good. Um, so we're going to dive right into the word on this afternoon, amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles or your mobile devices capable of the Bible, I will be coming from the book of 1 Samuel, amen. amen. Uh, the 16th chapter, I'll be starting at the 10th verse. While y'all are following, while, while y'all are finding that, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, oh yes, may you stand for the reading of God's word. This year, Bishop has decided to do a sermon series, and the topic for the month of January has been God Wants to Use You. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 16, starting at the 10th verse. When you have it, say amen. 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 Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Mm -hmm. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he comes hither. Mm -hmm. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was rooted and with him of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and he went to Ramah. Mm -hmm. Amen. The reading of God's words for God's people. My topic on this afternoon will be God can use the unlikely. Amen. You may have your seats. Uh, this might get a little lengthy. God can use the unlikely. This 
year, Bishop Langley has decided to start doing sermon series. Uh, for the entire month of January, the topic has been God wants to use you. Amen. First Sunday, he came and brought Gideon to the light, and God can use the weakest link. And he spoke on Gideon and how God told Gideon that his army was too big. Mm -hmm. And so he needed to cut his army down. Yes. Because I'm a jealous God. And I don't need none of y'all thinking that it was y'all that did this because I know how y'all are. Mm -hmm. The next week, he came and he showed that God could use your deficiencies. He used Moses. Moses stuttered. Moses got real nervous. Moses was starting to sweat. And, and, and God was telling Moses that he had to do a big thing, that he had to go to the land that he had killed a man and go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And Moses said, look, even just you saying that made me nervous and I started sweating and I started stuck. Amen. But God still used him. Last week, Bishop Langley showed you that you're it, that God wants to use you. And then he went further into Bible study and took you into the prophet Jeremiah. And showed you that Jeremiah was called at a young age. But the things that Jeremiah, the, 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 the outward expression of Jeremiah did not start to take place until he got older. But God was telling Jeremiah way back then, don't worry. I already got you. Amen. It's already prepared. Amen. So on today, I just simply want to continue on and tell you that God can use the unlikely. And I want to talk about a young man by the name of David. And here the thing is about David. He is one of my personal favorite characters in the Bible. You get a lot of coverage with Jesus, but you meet David from a young boy. And you follow David's whole life. From the time he's about 10 years old to the time that he dies, David is written. He is covered. From childhood to young adulthood, teenage years, to young adulthood, young man years, to father, husband, to established father of I have grown kids. You get the whole thing. And if you would talk to someone that read their word, they too would probably say, yeah, I like David as well. But it is also because we see a lot of ourselves in the story of David. Amen. Why? Because why is David so relatable? Mm. David had shortcomings like everybody else did. Come on now, say it. Mm -hmm. David had a lot of fails, just like we do. Mm -hmm. But what made David a man after God's own heart was that David always got it right. Amen. David always remembered where my help came from. Mm -hmm. And where I needed to go for my help. Yes. And when I mess up, I need to go get it right with my help. So I want to talk a brief little moment about the man that was born in Bethlehem that was the youngest of eight boys. And how he was not always looked at as king of Israel. He was not always looked at as the giant slayer. He was not always looked at as the man that slayed his 10,000. Once upon a time, David was looked at as an unlikely decision. He was looked at as a unpopular choice. As I just said, David came from a house that had eight boys, and he was the baby. That's one in eight chance. If you watch sports, for those of y'all that know there's a game going on today, by the way. <laughs> y'all watch sports. Yeah. If you went one and eight from the free throw line, they ain't going to want to put you there no more. Right. They are going to make sure you do not have the ball when it matters. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot be trusted there. Mm -hmm. And we know that. So we're going to keep that away from you. David was one of eight. But how do we even get to the point where we meet David? Well, this is an unlikely situation as well. There's a man by the name of Samuel, the prophet. And Samuel had a very close relationship with the previous king, King Saul. Samuel and Saul were tight. 
Samuel had kingship of Israel for 40 years. And Samuel was his advisor, his prophet, his pastor. Anytime Saul had an issue, he went to Samuel. When Samuel was given a word from God to direct to the king, Samuel went to Saul. They talked to each other a lot because he was the man to go to. Well, Saul started out real good. For those of you that know the story, God didn't ever even want to establish kings, but man wanted it done. So God said, okay, I'm going to do it. Saul started off real good. He started off, he was on fire. He was doing what he was supposed to do. He looked real good. He was, he was, he was big. He was tall, tall, dark, and handsome. He was easy on the eyes. He, he, he led the people, and, and he, he gave the credit to God. Amen. But the thing about power is this. If you are not careful, it will consume you. It will eat you. You have to consistently shove power away from you. So it does not consume you. So I started to do little things at first. It was little small, minuscule things mm -hmm. that to normal people would not seem like such a big deal. Mm -hmm. But see, God had every offense. He was marking every offense. Yes. He he tried to come up against the Philistines, and, and the Philistines, they didn't have, they didn't have any, they didn't have any uh, blacksmiths, because the Philistines had to took the land, they got all the blacksmiths in the Philistines' camp, so they didn't, they didn't have no weapons, the Israelites. So the Israelites was going to try to attack the Philistines, but they didn't have no weapons, so when the Philistines showed up, they got scared ran into the cave. Come on now. They got scared and ran into the cave, Saul was waiting on the prophet Samuel to come to sacrifice the sacrifices, or to do the sacrificing, and... Saul got scared and said, Samuel, you're taking too long. Bring the sacrifices. I'll do it. That was not his job. Amen. That was not his place. That was a mark. So then God said, send him. Slaughter everything. And he did not slaughter everything. He kept the king and they kept livestock. So, well, now we are in an unlikely situation between Samuel and Saul. Why? Because God has come to Samuel now and said, I regret that I ever made Saul king. I'm going to take my hand from him. Amen. And I found somebody else. I found a new king. And he's telling this to Samuel. And he's hitting Samuel with all this at night. And as I just said, this is a 40-year relationship. This is a 40-year relationship with this man. And so now I got to get up early and make my way to this land. And while I'm making my way down this path, I just want y'all to imagine these unlikely situations. While I'm making my way down this path, I hear goats. Mm -hmm. I hear cows. Yes. I hear celebrating. Yes. And I hear men that are happy with the victory yes. that they have gotten. Then I see Saul and he says, praise be to the Lord, for we have done the things that the Lord has commanded and we are ready to do the sacrifices. I am glad to see you, Saul, my brother. Give me a hug. Come on now. If that was the case, if you had done what the Lord said do, what is all of this noise that I hear? And why am I looking at a king? that God told you to slay. Well, I kept the king and my soldiers kept the livestock for sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Isn't obedience better than sacrifice? Mm -hmm. You've done a grave thing. God now has removed his hand from you. Mm -hmm. And I now have to go and find another king. God would have set you up for eternity. But now, no more. You are no longer king of Israel. And now, I have to go 
and find the next king. Saul said, I sinned against the Lord, but look, don't leave. At least come back and celebrate with me. Samuel did do him that justice. But after that, Samuel departed from Saul. Yes. He did not see that man no more mm -hmm. while he was alive. When God tells you no, no means no. Amen. When God gives you instructions, instructions mean instructions. Mm -hmm. Samuel was devastated. Samuel was hurt. Mm -hmm. Why was Samuel hurt? Because Samuel saw potential. God let Samuel peek into the potential of another individual. Yes. Samuel saw what Saul could have been. Mm -hmm. He saw what Saul could have been. And he understood the consequences of the offenses that this man was doing. Amen. And that hurt him. Mm -hmm. Because I saw what you could be. And you, you, you squandered. He even built himself a little fancy monument. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to be careful with power. Yeah. Saul was pulled out of the dirt. Didn't nobody know Saul? Didn't nobody know that man? But then he built himself a monument. Saul was devastated. Samuel was hurt. Then finally God came to him and said, look, how long will you mourn Saul? He said, I've moved on. It's time for you to get up, grab that horn, put oil in it, go to Bethlehem, to the house of Jesse, for the next king of Israel is there. So Samuel gets up. I'd imagine that this was a morning too. Samuel gets up. He puts the oil in the horn. He makes his way to Bethlehem. Now, side note, Samuel said, God, okay, I'm going to do it. But if Saul hears that I'm on my way to anoint the new king, I mean, he still got armies. He, he still got soldiers Amen. that he can, I mean, you know, me and you, we did the thing the other day, but he still got soldiers he can send for me. I don't, I don't want to be slain before I can make this journey. God said, that's a fair point. Take a heifer. And when you get there, tell him you're there for a sacrifice. Tell him you're there for a party and you're there for a sacrifice and we're just going to play it like that. So, okay, I'm on my way. 40 years, seven. The only time you saw these two, Saul and Samuel, it was because they were together. If they weren't together, it was because they were doing business. But 40 years, you saw these individuals together. King and advisor, advisor and king. My right hand, my voice, this is how I hear my boss. But now you only see one. So Samuel comes walking up into Bethlehem and the elders see Samuel coming and news like this, I'd imagine, would travel real, real fast. You know, the separation of an advisor and a king. And let alone this king show up in my town. <coughs> let alone this, this prophet show up in, in my town. These elders saw Samuel coming and they said, hey, do you got good news? Because they knew. God didn't always deliver good news. It wasn't always sweet things that came. Oftentimes when they saw the prophet, the prophet had, hey, you had to get it right. So those elders saw him and those elders knew. So they said, hey, have you come in peace? Samuel said, yes, I have come in peace, my brother, for I have come to sacrifice. Go to Jesse and get his boys and we will consecrate them and we will all have a feast. Jesse is no doubt excited because if the king of Israel comes from my house, then that means my house will be blessed. Not only will my house be blessed, Bethlehem will be blessed. Amen. This is the king. Amen. 
we are talking about here. This whole city stopped their working mechanism. Amen. They stopped what they were doing because the anointing of the king was about. Now, Jesse done got himself looking good. Jesse done took them seven boys and he done got them looking good. And we done lined them up. We done lined them up. We done put them in order. We done lined them up from oldest to youngest. And we got them standing here. And Samuel walks up and Samuel sees the boys. And Samuel sees Abinadad first. And Samuel says, Ooh, what? this was easy. Ah, uh, man, you got, you told you just, all, the, hard part, the hardest part was getting that cow in here. This gotta be him. He look at him, man. He is, I ah, mean, six foot five. The man looks good. Got broad shoulders. He kind of looks like so a little bit. This, this gotta be him, right? Surely this is the anointing standing in front of me. And God said, Hold up. Hold up. See? That's your problem. That's what God, that's what God did the last time. Your eyes. He might look pretty. He might look good. But that's not him. I've not chosen him. So Samuel said, okay. Let's slide all over. He went to the next one. And as verse 10 said, he tried all seven boys. Mm -hmm. And he got a no. He got seven no's. Some of you young children can relate to that. Mm -hmm. He got seven no's straight. And then he was sitting there. What a moment. What a unlikely moment. Because you got me out here. And I done did this and this oil still sitting in this horn. Uh -huh. And you said it ain't none of them. And two plus two ain't equal in four. I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm, 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 I'm a little lost here. So then he turns and he looks at Jesse and he says, Jesse, are all your boys here? Mm -hmm. And Jesse said, <laughs> Jesse said, well, I got one more Amen. that is not here. Uh, he said, he's little David. He out there with the sheep. He, he tended the sheep. At that moment, Samuel grasped that bit of hope. Because he was feeling real unlikely at that moment. He said, go send them to get him. And don't nobody move until he gets here. Amen. So they go and get this little fella. He's like 10, 10 years old. And like I said, the whole city, the whole city, everybody's here. Everybody's here. He probably said, hey man, can I at least wash my face, wash my hands? No, you don't got time for that. We got to bring the man said, we got to bring you right now. Amen. It probably smelled fabulous in there. They probably had all kinds of aromas, savory flavors, perfumes. It probably was smelling good. And here he come. <laughs> 10 years old, he probably was 110 pounds soaking wet. But his smell probably was about ready to run them out of there. <laughs> He came walking in there, and Samuel was looking at him, and Samuel was like, I mean, he looked good. I mean, he, he a cute little fella. He a cute, he a cute little boy. And you know, I mean, you know. And God was like, arise, anoint him. This is the one. What I want you guys to get from this unlikely situation and unlikely scenario is this. Before the man went through any of the Bathsheba, any of the Goliath, you guys are letting this man downplay my Lord and we can't have that. Before any of that, before he had to go and play a wild man, before he had to run from his son because his son wanted to kill him Amen. before he had to cut Saul's coat and show Saul when he woke up, hey look, I could have killed you. Mm -hmm. Before that man had all of those things happen to him, he stood before Samuel yes. in front of the whole town of Bethlehem 
And everybody in Bethlehem saw him and said, this is an unlikely choice. This is an unpopular opinion. I had the choices that I thought it would be and I most certainly wouldn't have saw. They walked by David every day. They went right by that little boy every day and didn't think nothing about it. Not only in the streets, but in his home. He was one of eight. I got three. And I can tell you, if I had eight, hold up, <laughs> but he was one of eight. He was one of eight. David spent his whole life before before Saul said, "Come and play my heart and be in my palace." David spent his whole life getting hand me downs. Probably second and third string things. He had seven brothers. David didn't know what nothing new felt like. He didn't know what new was. But what David did know was the Lord. Say it. Amen. Say it. Who David knew was God. Uh -huh. David's sure factor in the whole scenario was I know who my maker is. And not only do I know my maker, I have a relationship with my maker. There's a difference. There's a difference in you saying, I know the Lord, but then you being able to say, I got a relationship with the Lord. I labor. See, when I'm out there with them sheep, and y'all in the town, y'all doing all that town stuff around with these sheep, I'm talking to the Lord. I'm talking to him about everything that I got going on in my 10-year-old, 12-year-old life. And I did that. All my life. That's why I said all the days I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I might have became king, but I forever kept the shepherd's mentality. I didn't let kingly things. I didn't let kingly rules. I didn't let these things stop me or hinder my relationship. With God. Did I mess up? Yeah. Did I dot all my eyes and cross all my T's? Oh no. I lost a son mm -hmm. that was conceived in adultery. God punished me. Amen. But I still sat under God. Amen. I still served God. I still knew where my help came from. When I told Saul from a visit to check on my brothers, when I told Saul, look, you cannot let this Philistine man stand out there and throw these slurs against my Lord. Your men can't lose heart. I'll fight. Amen. Saul said, <laughs> Saul said, David, David was a little spunky fella. David was ready. Amen. Saul said, David, you're but a boy. I love your spirit. I love your enthusiasm. But David, you are, you are but a child. This is a warrior. This man has fought. Amen. David said, I killed a bear. And a lion. It, With the help of my Lord, this giant ain't never one more tally on the board for me. Uh -huh. Because I'm not fighting him with my might. See, y'all came, I came up here, y'all talked about the rewards. Y'all talked about what Saul offered for who could kill him. Mm -hmm. But see, when I went to Saul, I told Saul, you can't let your man lose heart in the Lord. Amen. Because this man standing out here shouting these defamers. Right. I'll fight. Yes. It won't about your rewards. It was because he was talking trash about my Lord. And I ain't like that. <laughs> ain't like that. At all. David was unlikely. He was unpopular. But David knew the Lord. David had a relationship with God. There are some of you that are unlikely. You are in unlikely situations. You have been unlikely people. You have had unlikely chapters. You have had chapters in your life that are unpopular for sure. Amen. You will not read out loud. But what I want to encourage you on today is God can use the unlikely situation. Amen. God can use the unlikely person. Amen. That circumstance that you're sitting there and you say, man, <clears throat> it's going to look good. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I can look to the left. I can look to the right. I can look up and down and I, I can't see no way out of this. The thing about it is, 
just like David. God anointed David way at 10. Mm -hmm. God never feared for David's life after the anointing. Amen. Because I know where you're going. See, see, see. You just see what you're going through. Mm -hmm. But it's like putting one of them little wrecks in the maze. Mm -hmm. And you watching them try to get to that cheese. Mm -hmm. You can see where that cheese is. Mm -hmm. You know where it's at. And, and you can even sit there and talk to that little rodent and say, hey, little rodent, go to the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the right. Mm -hmm. You have a, a, a broader perspective. But see, you here, you can't see that lift that you need to take. But see, your maker can. Amen. God can. Amen. And see, when I anointed you way back there, I didn't anoint you just for you to hit a wall here. Amen. I didn't anoint you in chapter 4 just for you to sit here and bow out in chapter 10. Amen. We got a whole book we got to cover. And just because you think this is an ugly chapter and you don't want to read it out loud, so be it. But I'm right with you here. Just like I have been everywhere else. God can use the unlikely. Don't let you not necessarily being known. Don't let you not necessarily feeling like you may not know what to do. Don't let your age, don't let where you are in your current situation in life the problem with our eyes is that we often allow them to dictate our reality. No matter how deep we may feel we are in our faith, every believer in every life gets to the point where these eyes give a little too much credit on what can be seen. Because our maker he gave us these eyes. But our maker and his abilities most certainly are not dictated or limited by our eyes. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. You can't see a way out. But your maker knows the way out. Your maker already has you out. That's really how fast he moves. You already, your maker already got you out of the situation that you're in right now. The problem is you sit down like like Samuel did. The problem is you sit down and you mourn and you weep and you ponder on it and, 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 and you let it fester in you. And God has to say, hey, how long will you weep over that situation? Because I had you, I, I had you out of it last week. But now let's get up and let's take steps. God can use the unlikely. Before the man at the God's own heart, before the king of Israel, before all of those things, he was a little Rudy boy chasing around sheep and goats. One of eight. One of eight. Before all of those things, David had so much life. You covered David in 1st, 2nd Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. He is, he is documented everywhere. He wanted to build his, he wanted to build God a temple. He said, Lord, I love you so much. I've done, and this is after he's done all this fighting. This is after he's taken out. He's, he's killed people. He said, Lord, I love you so much. You, you've looked after me through so many situations. I want to build you a temple. It is not right that you are in a tent and they have to carry you around. That is not right. I want to build you. You deserve a stationary worship place. Mm -hmm. I want to do it. And God said, David, you can't. I love your enthusiasm, David, but you can't. You got too much blood on your hands. Mm -hmm. But what I will do is I'll let your seed do it. Mm -hmm. So his son Solomon was the one that built the temple. And Jesus Christ himself came from the lineage of David. And this is because David was a man after God's own heart. Amen. It's not about perfection. Mm -hmm. It is about knowing your maker. Amen. It is not about hitting all the marks. But it is about knowing when you mess up, when you fall into diverse temptations. It is about knowing where you can go. I know exactly where I can go right now. I know where my help comes from. And that's what God saw. It is about your character. As Dr. King said, 
It is about your character. God saw David's heart. And we have to do a better job of looking at the heart of people. And not looking at the tangible things. Not the things that we can see. But we have to do a better job as a society, as a, as a church, as a believer. We have to do a better job of heart examination. Because one thing that was right with David was David's heart. Amen. He might have been unlikely choice by some people, but God said, man, you can't find nobody better in this land. I know the boy's heart. The boy's heart is after mine. And you can't beat that. Amen. That's all I have for you. Amen. 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 Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. The minister registered. What a message. What a message. He said, God can use the unlikely. Amen. That means that God can use you. Amen. That's exactly what that means. And just like he's telling the story about David, he was the unlikely one. He was the runt of the family, if you will. David was the stinky one. You know, David, David was out there with sheep goats and all kind of stuff, you know, so anyway, that's a, that's a great story, that's a great message, you know, because like you said, God can use anyone, and that means, that means God can use any of us, so, so we, again, we are grateful for that message that he, he brought to us on today, uh, we look forward to him bringing many more messages to us, like this message that he presented today, and now it is time for uh, offering, we, we, we do our offering, uh, at the end of service, and we do it in response to the word. And again, what a word from the min from Minister Register on, on today. So if you will, get your ties ready in your hand. And Minister Odell is going to come back and pray for these ties. And then he's going he's to give us benediction and we're going home and, and eat some grocery. <laughs> Amen. Amen. With your ties in your hand, come on now. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, right now we come before you, Father, just to bless uh, the offering that these your people are about to bring forth, Father. Father, let the people know that whatever they can give is perfectly fine, God. God, we are appreciative and we are thankful. Father, for whatever these individuals are able to bring into the storehouse, oh God. And God, I ask right now that you bless uh, the gifts from these individuals, oh God. I ask that you bless them, oh God. I ask that you come into their households, God, and come into uh, whatever situation that they have going on, Father, for their obedience. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bring your ties, amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Um, Stuart is Jerry. I got a. I didn't do the altar call. Do you mind if I do the altar call real quick?